All right, guys, and we're looking at the Thunderbolts Omnibus Volume 2. With Volume 3 just coming out last week, I really did want to review this because I just got a chance to sit down and read it. And whenever a new writer takes over, it's always 50-50 if they have that same feel or if they bring something new that's actually more enjoyable than the last person who did the run. And as most people know, I butcher names, so I'm going to just say Febian, hopefully I'm saying his first name correctly, takes over for the writing over Kurt, who is more focused on the Avengers at this point he was really getting deep into his run there and they do cross over here so what's involved in this omnibus well we have Thunderbolts issues 34 to 63 and then the Thunderbolts annual 2000 Avengers 31 to 34 and Avengers annual 2000 that's mostly them crossing over with the Thunderbolts at one point and then we have like little one shots like life sentence uh, from Marvel vote uh, and then we have mini series which was actually a little bit of a surprise for me which is citizen V and the V battalion which is three issues and citizen V and the V battalion the everlasting which is four issues and as you know, I really enjoyed the Thunderbolts Volume 1. It was a little iffy at points, uh, but mostly was really consistently very well done. And I had a blast with it. I was really intrigued where they were going with Hawkeye kind of becoming the team leader. And we really get that continuation right here. So is it worth checking out? Well, let's dive right into it. Really, this omnibus took me for a ride of different emotions and thrills while also making me question what the fuck is happening so let's talk about the start so the story threads that music kind of set up they are continued here now i personally enjoy both writers so it didn't bother me the change of hands when it came to writing except i believe fabian tries to juggle too much at once setting up so many major story beats that eventually it will all conclude but not before a couple of dozen issues and crossovers to tell them leaving it feeling a bit padded I do believe the very start of this run is great, the first couple of issues, giving us a death out of nowhere. It almost feels like so casually in the way that was done that you have to appreciate it for being a little too realistic, especially this day and age with gun violence. After that happens, you do get multiple story threads, one including Scourge, which is a character reveal that kind of left me having to Wikipedia him because <laughs> I don't know who that was really or what was happening, but once I got it, it was kind of cool. And then you have Fixer and some major and kind of convoluted story beats all leading to V's grand return but there's a slight twist on that so if it sounds confusing that's because there's a lot going on here and there was a crossover event that was kind of nice because music got to kind of write the Thunderbolts again as they came into his story fall with the Avengers but that kind of crossover was just a little too okay for me so yeah, there's a lot to process, and honestly, it felt very confusing at times, and the lettering was kind of huge, and there was a lot of internal dialogue, and some of the pages just kind of felt cluttered to the point that I wasn't enjoying the story beats that were being presented. However, I want to say that I'm glad I kept going because I think that the Thunderbolts just keep evolving into characters that are much more interesting than I ever expected them to be. And as we got into the more 2000s era, uh, it definitely became nicer with the art because, well, we just have better art as time goes on. Then, after we do get to issue 50 here, things start to get a lot better for me. Strip back all the high concept and 20 storylines and just give me Graviton's return. And yes, that's Psycho from the earlier stories in the first Out in the Abyss, but this this time Carla is on his side and it's just great the Thunderbolts are no more really they're kind of replaced by these guys called the Redeemers and only Jolt and Charcoal are really part of that Thunderbolts team and then we have this evil villain that returns and he just my god it's truly startling the amount of deaths and the brutal endings to some of these characters while the old Thunderbolts have to somehow work together as a team again to stop him so the second half of this omnibus is by far my favorite part and I was actually glued to it the entire time except I do want to say that V miniseries at the end of the omnibus was not for me the first V miniseries the three-parter had a cool twist and it was pretty fun to read but the second wasn't nearly as interesting it was just really boring been there done that and was sadly the one of the, one of the very last stories in the omnibus there's a one shot after that but really that kind of just drags it down when i'm finishing on a dour story 
Uh, but yeah, this one's a far more mixed bag than Volume 1, as you can tell probably listening to me. Well, I think Volume 1 is just kind of better constructed overall and more consistent. I do think this one tries to take bigger swings, and while I think the later half succeeds in a big way, and I love the Graviton story and some of the small one-shots, I do believe the first half, while it could be fun, is a little too overwhelming with all the storylines and that V-Mini at the end. Well, let's be honest, that's the only really bad thing of this whole omnibus. I will say that the art stays pretty solid throughout. I had no major complaints. I know Mark Bagley does some, but we have multiple artists here, obviously. And they all, you know, do a good job. As the omnibus progresses, I do think the art does get better as we get into the early 2000s. But yeah, overall, is it good? Is it bad? Well, I think it's pretty good. I don't think... It reaches the level of volume one and i think it's a little messy at times but it was also really enjoyable and i love this team so much that i have to pick up volume three and then eventually they're releasing more thunderbolt on the business after that so i'm very excited so for this one i'm gonna give it a three out of five if you could pick it up on sale definitely worth it especially if you like volume one you do have to pretty much mandatory read volume one to understand what the hell is happening here uh, but even if you do, it might be a little confusing at start. But stick with it. I think it really turns itself around about halfway through. And uh, yeah, this is a solid 3 out of 5 for me for Thunderbolts Volume 2. I hope you liked this review. If you did, hit that like button. That always means a lot. If you love it, hit the subscribe button. I got more videos like this coming out. I hope everybody here has a wonderful day.